Hello guys, it's Zoe. This week we're going to be doing a draw this again. Again! Because this is the second time I've drawn this again on this channel. This illustration is called The Umbrella Boat and I thought it would be a perfect time to draw this illustration because currently the artist community has this challenge called Mermaid. Am I participating in it? No, because I do one art challenge a year and that's usually Inktober. But I can't help but draw mermaids in May. It's only natural. It's the natural order of things. Just before I get started talking about the illustration and also how I think I've improved upon it, I just want to clear up a little misconception. This was completely my bad, but I have lost all concept of time and probably space at this point because in the video it seems that the original illustration was done in 2013. However, it was actually done January 2015 and I forgot to check my dates. I'm forgetting a lot of stuff at the moment. I'm sure I'm not the only one doing this. So a little bit of history about this piece. Originally, it was actually for my portfolio to get into university. It was done towards the end of my college days. And the original sketch is actually in an A6 sketchbook. In mid 2017, I decided to do a draw this again of this piece. And I changed up many elements of the 2015 piece. The changes were the colors, the mermaid's position, as well as the scale of the image. I don't know why I did that. I think 2017 was definitely a year of digital painting for me, whereas 2018 onwards was very much about traditional art and only traditional art. When doing the 2020 piece, I definitely considered the colours of the original piece because I really like the look of the original piece. However, you can't deny that that tail is just completely broken. Also, the mermaid just looked younger because I think in 2015, I very much had a more chibi style in mind for that character. I thought the idea of a mini mermaid riding in an umbrella down a stream was a cute idea. So the 2015 version is more of a cutesy sort of vibe. 2017, I definitely was more realistic in my style and you can definitely tell that with the other Draw This Agains I did throughout the year of 2017 to the point where when in 2018 I did more digital pieces, people were saying that I had gone backwards in my improvement because I wanted to go back towards more of a cartoony style. So when doing the 2020 version, I definitely thought about that kind of thing and whether I wanted a cartoony style. I really wanted to blend the two styles together and I feel like I've definitely found my footing with my art style, especially over the last year. Just before I started the line work, I actually decided to do a little colour composition. So picking out my colours, I mainly picked it out from the original piece from 2015. However, there was some that I picked out from 2017 as well. When deciding on the colours, they were definitely way too bright to start out with. And I've noticed a trend with me digital painting currently. I get to about the halfway stage or like the base colour stage and I just hate it. I love the sketching process, I love the line work process, but colouring the base colours, for me, I don't know, I just don't like it because I feel like it looks wrong. It also ends up taking way longer than it should. The 2020s umbrella boat, I wanted little details that I would usually add in my work or like changing some of the details up. So I actually decided to give the mermaid like little fishy ears or like little mermaid ears. I started doing this with the characters. I think it just looks really cute. I also gave her freckles because you can't stop me. I am the freckle fiend with the characters. If there shall be freckles, I shall put them on a character. <laughs> I did consider giving her gills around her neck, but I just thought that was a little bit too much, especially with the fact that I gave her freckles and fishy ears. In 2015 and 2017's versions, the program that I used was Paintful Sai. Now this is actually the first umbrella boat done with Clip Studio Paint, and I think it's a really interesting comparison because the two sort of complement each other. And over this last year, I have replaced Paintful Sai with Clip Studio Paint because it has more features than Paint Tool Sai. It's kind of sad how I phased Paint Tool Sai out of my life, but it just naturally happened over time. Now we're getting on to the base colours, and as I said before, I hated doing base colours because I felt like it was completely wrong. It just didn't look right. And this is what happened in my previous digital illustration. Just nothing was looking right. 
And I think in a way, going with the old colours actually was a hindrance more than a help, because the old colours were just far too bright in the first place. If there is one thing that I took away from the 2017 Draw This Again video that I did for the umbrella boat, it was don't shade in black. I definitely followed my advice there. But what's funny about that video is I didn't actually watch the original video from 2015 or the 2017 video until after I'd finished the 2020 videos. So that way it was like a completely fresh look at those two videos. The 2015 video, oh my god, it's awful with its commentary. I am so, so sorry for anybody who has seen that video. I will leave a link to the original 2015 Umbrella Boat video, however I will warn you it is very very cringy in its voiceover. What's really interesting about the Draw This Again series of videos on my channel is that you not only see the artwork quality improve, you also see the quality of the video improve and this is definitely shown in the commentary of the 2015. I found it so difficult to sit through that video without cringing because the commentary was recorded while I was recovering from a flu and oh, I sound like a squeaky door hinge. This week I thought I'd do a digital illustration. About halfway through shading the mermaid, I just thought to myself, wait, it would be better if I actually had the lighting situation down in the background. That way I could just light it properly. I will say in the past I have actually done the lighting last and it's always been a detriment to the work that I've been doing because doing the lighting first allows you to get a sense of depth and composition as well as the structure of your work but as I implied in my little intro to this video I've kind of lost brain cells throughout this quarantine period or at least they have gone on holiday where I can't go so I kind of forgot to do the lighting ended up pausing halfway through and thinking oh little sticks I need to drop everything and continue the lighting. But as you can tell throughout this, the colours don't really look right. So I ended up asking my friends Sammy and Gabby if they had any tips to help me out or any feedback because it just wasn't going anywhere and I just was feeling really off about the image. The main thing that was said was that I should be taking reference of the colours of fields and I agree. <laughs> Yes, I didn't reference the water, should have done that. That was on my list of things to do, but remember, lack of brain cells right now. I didn't think of that at the time, wish I did. Another bit of feedback that I kind of took upon myself to give was that I was not convinced with the background. I hated the way the trees were turning out. I tried to do them myself and I tried to make them look like the 2017 trees, but they just looked awful. The background itself looked incredibly flat, whereas the picture of the character looked more 3D, like it was actually in some kind of space. So it was very jarring to try and mesh the two together, or try and make them go together like they were supposed to. Looking back at the past iterations of this piece, I will say that that was a general trait of this piece because the sketch in the sketchbook was just done as the little icon of the mermaid in the umbrella. That was it. No background, no nothing. She was just plonked into a background without any care or consideration. So it makes sense why I had so much trouble with this piece because previous Draw This Again pieces actually had compositions. They actually have some rhyme or reason to exist, whereas this one, it really didn't. So now I'm going to talk about the positives that I find in both pieces that came before the 2020 piece. So first of all, 2015. This original piece, I felt like the style was incredibly cute. I loved how lively the character looked, like she was truly interacting with her environment. She looked curious and so, so sweet. That was definitely something I wanted to capture in the 2020 version. I also loved the depth and dimension that I got in the water, as well as in the grass as well. Not necessarily the colour of the grass, it's just that I liked the level of detail. Oh look, there's that magical reference image for the colours, popping in to say hi. Anyway, 2017. The 2017 piece was definitely more blended. I found it really, really pretty in terms of the colours. I loved the purple and yellow sort of shading that I had going on. Obviously the yellow was more highlights, but there was 
purple in the shadows and oh my god it just gave it more of a fantastical sort of vibe and I think that's the kind of thing that I wanted with the original as well I wanted a very magical mystical kind of things and even though it was a huge leap in technical advancements between 2015 and 2017 it feels like the character itself was lost in other details the character in the 2017 version definitely feels more static. She's looking at us, the viewer, which was not the original look of this entire thing. Also, her pose appeared way more laid back and less curious. It reminds me of the kind of thing that happens when you have this sketch that has so much life, but then you put it into line work and then color, but the lines and color don't give you the same amount of life as the sketch does. So when doing the version for 2020, I really wanted to do a mashup of what made both of these two pieces from the past, 2015 and 2017, great. I wanted to put all the good qualities together. I wanted to capture the life of 2015 with the skill of 2017 and hopefully a little bit better than 2017's skill. Like with all my digital pieces, this had a lot of back and forth and a lot of indecision. I am what people call a VIP, a very indecisive person or impatient person. Take your pick, because I could fit either one of those two acronyms. I know I keep saying I haven't done digital art in a while, this time, I don't have to say that because I did it a couple of weeks ago for a fan art video, which reminds me, I've been wanting to do the six fan art challenge, but I can't think of any characters to draw because there's so many. If you guys could help me out with which characters to draw down below in the comments, that'd be great. And hopefully that will be a future video. I say hopefully because I have a very long list of video ideas to get done and Yes, all the time in the world, but there's not enough hours in the day. There never was and there never will be, and I get distracted as all hell. With this video in the process of wrapping up, I just want to say a big thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you like my content, you can always like and subscribe if you want to. I don't know whether YouTube actually sends out YouTube notifications, it's been a little bit spotty here and there. But if you would like notifications for my uploads, I would recommend clicking the little bell next to the subscribe button. And leave me a comment down below whether you think I've improved, what you like about the new piece, and the thing you like most about the 2020 version. I am currently in the process of trying a new upload schedule here on YouTube. I'm hoping to upload every Thursday if I can. I am trying to get my life more structured, considering life in general has just been thrown out the window. But with that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!